Is Al still out? God bless you. Yet another term for gold. It's got to be some kind of pattern. What are you trying to do? We believe there's a chance these notes were written in code. Give him the Roy Mustang. We noticed that he uses several different terms for gold and immortality across various passages. So we're checking to see if they're connected. And you think that could be the code? You're hoping so. Uh, uh, where am I? Ow! There we go. Oh my goodness, you're okay. I was so scared you might not wake up. I didn't know what to do. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to freak you out like that. So where are we? And why am I in pieces? Good question. Has this ever happened to you before? Just once. When Very I was trying recently. to find you guys. Yeah. Well then, I can't imagine it's very comfortable being scattered about like that. Why don't we start putting you back together? Please. That's a great idea. I guess we should reassemble him correctly. Uh, reassemble the pieces. What are you doing, May? What are they out of order? Connecting each occurrence of the words for gold and immortality by physically overlapping them. Let me take a look at those other pages, Marco. <gasps> Golden, that connects over here. And what about Aurelian? Oh yeah, right here. Whoever put this together, <laughs> they're having a lot of fun. Uh, I wonder if we. Sure, just draw right all over them. It's the countrywide transmutation circle. <sighs> it's too late for this to help us now. Wait, are you saying what I think? You mean these damn research notes are completely useless to us? No way, you can't be serious! But what about the... What's gonna happen to our families, our country? I'm sorry. I should have known this was nothing but an act of futility. It was naive to think someone else's research could save us. What else could you have done, though? You did your best. Brother, is this really all that you were trying to tell me? I doubt it. After all of your research... You couldn't see a way to stop this. I hadn't considered how much this must mean to Scar to see his brother's research be useful. In a way, they're using his brother's research keeps the brother alive or connects Scar to him in some way that's meaningful. I also wonder if Scar feels responsible for carrying out his brother's legacy because it was his brother who gave his life to save Scar. And after all the terrible things he's done, this might be a way he can actually get something like redemption or actually do some good. We're missing something. <laughs> We've only broken the first code. And I bet there's more. Al knows. There's gotta He's the be alchemist. Some other message hidden in there. These alchemists are a tricky lot. Uh, Everything's gotta be code uh, all the time. Can't you cover your mouth, you idiot? Well, thanks God bless for you again. that I'm getting sick. I can't help the fact that I'm catching pneumonia. Who cares? <laughs> that guy summarizing the audience's opinion of Yoki. <laughs> no, Yoki, most important character. Everyone loves him. You can't even tell which side of the page is right side up anymore. <laughs> Good job, moron. You blew the whole damn thing upside down. Turn it upside down. There's two sides! Is that a metaphor for the show, too? So many things in this show have two sides. You were right, Al. This is it. Told you, leave it's it to Al. It's a Mestrian transmutation circle. But it's activated through Shinghi's Alcastry instead. Interesting. Episode 42, signs of a counteroffensive. A glimmer of hope, maybe? Oh, God. This is why people think you're a psycho. There's no evidence that someone's come through this way. I might have taken the wrong path after all. Guess I'll turn back. Follow the trail of Yoki's whining. Alternatively, you could kiss someone. They must have been using this place to dispose of the excess rubble from the tunnel that Sloth has been digging. Look who it is. You must be the Crimson Alchemist. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Pride. Can I help you with something? <laughs> so casual. Developments with Scar. I'm actually pursuing him now. Worry about him later. Ask for now. Go ahead and carve the crest of blood at Briggs. With all due respect, Pride, the soldiers of Briggs are much stronger and more resourceful than you might realize. It's very, not exactly very a shrewd task. Yeah. Then use their strength to your favor. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sloth is nearing completion of the tunnel. So there's little time left. So it's an urgent matter. Well, if you insist that I carve the crest of blood at Briggs, I'd be happy to oblige you. But how do you use their strength against them? What's going on in the south? Have you 
spoken with Fury? We talked on the phone a while back. It's just as bad down there. They're locked in combat with Arago. Oh no, my pawn. Keep moving, Thomas! Just don't stop! Thomas! Oh no, it's his name is Thomas? Oh Thomas! Why is it always Thomas? Every show it's Damn Thomas. It! I'm gonna survive this! I'm gonna live! I won't die for this! That was just a dramatic explosion. That wasn't him dying. Bradley's got his soldiers everywhere up here. Working around the clock to create hell on Earth. And the worst part is, there's nothing we can do. This gives an extra amount of significance to Briggs if, like, everything else is complete. It's just them. Like, it's just these people holding it down. High stakes at Briggs. Maybe one of the biggest mistakes for Bradley was just choosing people who are too suitable for the job. Olivier Armstrong really accomplished something special with Briggs. This is insignificant, but maybe that explains why some of these higher-ranking military officers are so terrible. Like, Raven was a big nothing. Maybe they choose weak people so that they don't have this kind of Armstrong scenario. Speaking of working around the clock. Is that it? Full circle? Connected. I'm all done working. Does this mean I can rest? Can I pride? The time draws near. Whoa, things are really ramping the up day here. The of reckoning is almost within our grasp. Go ahead and line up. It's time to take a lunch break. You know, Rose, I'd love to try your three meat pie sometime. Well, I promise to make it as soon as we get some meat. <laughs> I'll try to be patient. Um, excuse me, miss. May, may I have some food, if you don't mind? Ah, thank you. You saved me. Literally. Thanks so much. Where are you from, if you don't mind me asking? Xerxes. I'm not really from anywhere. I tend to travel mostly. Hmm. And what brings you all the way out to Lior? We don't mean to pry. We're just surprised to have a tourist. Rose! I was struggling there for a second. I'm sorry. Rose! Lior Rose! Seems like she's doing well since the last time we saw her. That's good. Most people tend to avoid Lior. There isn't much left here after the riots. I can see that. I just wish there was more I could do to help out around here. Don't underestimate yourself. A delicious meal and the smile of a lovely young lady are more help than you can imagine. Hmm, what's this? <clears throat> He's had 400 years to practice his charm. Can you point me towards the church? Which church? Well, I'm actually looking for the church of Leto where the riot started. Leto's not doing so hot right now. I get the feeling that this was put here to keep people from going any further. So... Wait! Hey, what are you doing? That stuff will kill you! No, it won't. It's some kind of miracle. That's it's a walking no miracle, philosopher's stone. But I know what it is. Yeah. That's alchemy. Oh, yeah, that too. Would you mind waiting for me? <sighs> you don't get these two involved. Rose has been through enough. I'm impressed. They certainly went all out making this. We found the tunnel. Found it right off the bat, didn't I? This is gonna bring him into contact with Pride. There he is! Man, when was the last time they met, I wonder? I mean, like, Hohenheim and some iteration of the thing in the flask. Let's see if I can trap it. It's just in the shadows somehow. I'm afraid that's all I've got. So I'm assuming that this must be the edge of your container. You'll die if you pass it, correct? You can't survive outside of your container, can you? It's not much different than your flask, is right, it? Right, I was about to say, just like the flask. What's wrong? Why the silent treatment? Did I hit a nerve? <laughs> Imagine taunting a homunculus like this. Are you angry? I'm never angry. Anger does not exist within me. My name is Pride. Pride the Arrogant. You're obviously the first one that he separated. Pride was his strongest trait. 
and the mere fact that he took the time and energy to give you his original appearance. That act alone shows how egotistical he truly is. You are the pure essence of your father. I insist that you come with me to see Fall. Don't try to rush me, Pride. I don't need an invitation to call on him. But you can give him a message. Tell him Slave 23 will be dropping in quite soon. Wow. Just tell him to be patient and relax in his chair beneath Central. I'm coming. I am waiting, Von Hohenheim. Yes, I am waiting for you. Damn. Imagine having the balls to look pride in the eye and talk like that. Eyes, eyes, many eyes. Seeing that and also the last couple episodes, it seems like the big encounter in some ways, even though it hasn't really been featured heavily, is between Hohenheim and Father. We focus so much on Ed and Al and the other characters, but these are really the big dogs. Like, this is where the conflict is, or where it originated. One thing I've been thinking about since the episode with the Xerxes flashback is how there are a lot of two sides things happening. One thing that made me think about this is usually when we see Pride or Selim, they show the moon. And I believe they also showed the moon in the Xerxes flashback. And this works on a couple levels. Like one, the moon has a has a duality to it, right? It's like the bright side and the dark side, which could be human good and evil, which maybe is represented by Father and Hohenheim. There's also alchemy and alchemy. There's creation and there's destruction as represented by Scar's arms, right? There's just a lot of like two sides things. I mean, there's just a lot of things like that in, in the world, like a lot of things that have duality, but it seems like there are a lot in this show. But maybe the most important one is the idea of humanity and human traits, because that's the one we've seen the most of, I think, even going all the way back to the beginning. And we see that in the differing views about what humans are. Like, we see the narrative of humans from Father as being just weak, evil, stupid. And we see him wanting to destroy humanity or subjugate humanity. But we also see the counterexample of that with the characters, who are just basically, like, the best humanity has to offer in many ways. Oh, here he comes. He had a great time. Did you find anything? Yes, I'll say. dangerous and disturbing things not meant for ordinary people. What exactly were you doing in there? Hmm. A lot. Sending a declaration of war. He seems so happy about it. No way. What the hell? It couldn't be. Is it Drachman spies? It's Drachma! Finally, I've been waiting for Drachmans to show up. All this talk about them. All men, prepare for combat. This is using their power against them. They have a lot of influence if they can just do this. Is this really happening, or is this some kind of trick? We are rather fortunate the northern wall of Briggs has been called away. Good timing, Mr. Kim Lee. And on top of that, I see. I've got a number of my top men already stationed inside the fort. They'll spring their treachery when the fighting starts. The ensuing chaos should weaken them from within. Let's send a declaration of war. What do you say we give them a nice fireworks show for starters? All cannons, prepare to fire! This is crazy. All that tension finally bubbling to the surface. Fire! I don't know who you're messing with, though. I mean, they got Kimberly. Ah, oh, damn it. I hate you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And credit scene. This is Zampano reporting in. I'm one of Kimberly's soldiers. Dr. Marco and Scar are hiding out in the slums of Asbeck Village. No, after you made Al's right talk? By telling me this, Zampano. And I promise that you'll be protected. Zampano. <laughs> I haven't seen Andy for a Mark. long time. Things are starting to look up. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> so this is episode 42. Feels like we're in the finale. We're starting it. I've heard this show has a long finale. It definitely feels like... We're in new territory now. This is not your normal daily adventures in the lives of Ed and Al. It's pretty insane. I mean, I think my favorite part of the episode was the meeting of Hohenheim and Pride. Pride obviously looks very familiar to Hohenheim, so I should be forgiven for confusing them for so long a couple episodes ago. I expect Briggs to put up a hell of a fight, though. They're not gonna go down easy, although, you know, this is what's so good about the show. Everybody is a threat. There are so many threats on all sides. Like, Briggs is a force to be reckoned with, but Armstrong's not there, and the other side is Kimberly. But that being said, I think maybe the same could be true of Central City, because that's where Bradley is, and that's where a lot of people are, but also so Roy's there. There are insiders everywhere on both sides. And let's not forget my boy Havoc. Havoc's sort of under the radar. And Alex Lewis Armstrong. He's gonna do the right thing. Another interesting thing about this episode is the reveal of the reverse circle, the alchemy circle. I wonder what that is and I wonder how you do that because we know that alchemical symbol is about human sacrifice and blood. But alchemy, which is somehow connected to Hohenheim's version since he's the, the Eastern Sage, seems to be more about healing. So I'm curious what that will look like. And then we have Al falling further and further into this state of danger. There's just so much happening all at once. It's really exciting. Things are really getting crazy. But that's the end for now. I'll see you guys next time for episode 43.